All right, we're back. We're going to talk about geometry. This is page 1109 again, and I uh, want to look particularly at pages 22 through 24. All right, looks like this. There's a whole page of uh, properties, okay, of congruence. And we want to talk a little bit about what those mean. <clears throat> If you think about some of the basic algebra that you've had, uh, even some pre-algebra, if you had algebra last year, these should make sense thinking of numbers, okay? So the addition property says if equal quantities are added to equal quantities, then the sums are equal. So if we said, you know, A equals B, then if I add C to both sides, you know, A plus C would be equal to B plus C. So all they did was add the same thing to both sides of the equation. And so they kind of demonstrate that they're in the, in the pace. But let's look at it with some geometry here. If we used symbols here and said AB is equal to CD, okay, then we could take AB and add BC and that would be equal to CD plus BC. So you see how we're taking this is equal to this, and we're taking this BC and adding it to both sides of the equation. By doing that, we are, these two things are still, this is still equal to this because all it did was add the same thing to both sides. So we're used to doing that in algebra, we're doing it now in geometry using these um, shapes, all right? So then we uh, look at subtraction, and now we're kind of starting here and saying, okay, if AC, let me write it up here. Oh, where's the marker? If I started here and said AC is equal to BD, then that would be the same as saying AC and then take away BC, pull that right out. And over here I'll say BD minus, so this whole thing would take out this piece. So again, just like algebra, but instead of taking away a number from both sides, we're taking away a shape, a line segment. It can be done with angles as well, all right? Multiplication property, if you multiply both sides with the same thing, then the answer is still equal. Same with division, that's easy. Partition property just means that um, a whole is equal to the sum of its parts. And they give an illustration there that's easy to follow, all right? Reflexive property, you're going to be surprised how often in geometry you're actually going to use reflexive. Reflexive just means anything is equal to itself. So any shape is congruent to itself or equal to itself. So that's, that one's actually pretty easy. I want to take a minute now to talk about the difference between transitive and substitution because that one is uh, a bit trickier. And uh, that one often gets students kind of hung up because they look very similar. Transitive says if a is equal to B, okay, and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. And it looks like all we did was substitute, you know, well, if C is equal to B, I'll substitute it here. That's not actually what happened, okay? <clears throat> I like to, rather than write it out this way, do it underneath. If A is equal to B, and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. By the way, these three dots, you're going to see this a lot in geometry too, it looks like a little pyramid, means therefore, or we can conclude, all right? So A equals B, B equals C, we can conclude that A equals C. Now what's happening here is whatever A equals, in this case B, in the next statement we start with that, very important, okay? It's a subtle thing, but I want you to notice. A equals this, we start with that here, and then we make that equal something else. And then we go back and say this is equal to this. But do you see right here? Let me use red so you can see it a little better. 
I call this the Z pattern. So if it has the Z pattern, we know it's transitive. A equals B, then we use that same B here, and that leads us to the conclusion. Do you see the Z? It has to have the Z pattern to be transitive. Um, the illustrations that might be substitution would be something like this. Angle A, measure of angle A, plus the measure of angle B equals 80 degrees. And then if we say the measure of angle B is 40, then we can go back and say, okay, the measure of angle A plus 40 equals 80. So what I did is I had a statement here, but then I took one thing, that angle, this angle B, oops, I forgot to put the measure of angle B, Measure angle B is 40, so then I can substitute that 40 in place of what it is equal to up in the other statement. Okay, so that is substitution. So again, transitive, look for the Z pattern. Any other case where something that's equal is being substituted is indeed substitution. Now the last thing I want to talk about here is, let's take uh, two examples that are similar to what you're going to do on page 24. What if we said, if x plus 5 equals 13, then x equals 8? Now, number one, is that true? Yes, you know that, okay? So if I plugged in 8, yep, that would work. So am I doing the addition property, the subtraction property, multiplication, division? What am I doing? What property is being illustrated here? And most students, okay, maybe you're one of them. You look at that and you say, oh, I see addition. So that's the addition property. No. <laughs> That is wrong, and if that's the mindset you have, you're gonna get this whole page wrong, all right? And then your page will have a lot of red ink on it, like this page did. So let's talk about what's actually happening. To get from here to here, what we had to do was subtract five from both sides. And that took me from x plus five down to x. And over here I had 13, but if I take away the same thing from both sides, 5, now I'm at 8. All right? So it, again, it's simple algebra, but think, we're thinking in geometry. We think about all the steps and why am I doing what I'm doing? Okay, not just what works, or I can do that in my head, but why am I doing what I'm doing? So the reason I can do this is I'm subtracting the same thing from both sides, and then when I apply the subtraction, the conclusion is x equals 8. Okay? So that's actually the subtraction property. So let's look at this one then. 5 times x equals 30, then x equals 6. All right, so now you're thinking, Capizon, you're not going to just jump at it and say, I see multiplication, so it has to be multiplication property. No. What are we doing? To get from here, 5x, to x, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side of the equation to get from 30 to six, what am I doing? Dividing by five, okay? So let me write that on here. I'm gonna do over five, so we divide by five, and if I take the 30 and divide by five, and simplify, we get six. So actually, this is demonstrating the division property because I divided both sides by the same quantity, five. I hope that makes a little more sense, especially that transitive as you go through and even the next few paces, you'll come across one, you'll say, I think that should be substitution, but the score key says it's transitive. Or you might put transitive and the score key says substitution. Hopefully what we just talked about here will help clarify that for you and make it just a little bit, hopefully make a little bit more sense. You're going to see some problems like this on the checkup and the self-test, uh, a couple on the pace test like that. And uh, so hopefully you nail it and uh, you actually are going to use some of these same properties as we do proofs throughout the next few paces. All right, hopefully that's helpful. I think this is the last video that we're doing for pace 1109.